What is Brahman consciousness? The Supreme Consciousness. Yeah, what is the Supreme Consciousness? Very nice word, big word. Everything what is it? Everything is what? And? Even before the Big Bang Theory, there was uh, every the mm. prakriti of the purusha, the matter, everything came up from that. So, whatever we see, it's all part of it. So, there's nothing beyond. It's like the ocean. Yeah? The huge, big, vast ocean is the Brahman consciousness. Yes? A coral is also inside it. A sea plant is inside it. A sea animal is inside it. A sea horse is inside it. A little baby fish, goldfish is inside it. The shark is inside it. Yeah? There are stones. There is sand. Everything is inside the ocean. Got it? Like that, only we are in an ocean of life. And we are all these fishes and living and non-living things. Even this is inside the ocean of life. It's a non-living object. Yes? But all of us are inside that ocean of life. That ocean of life is the Brahman consciousness. Got it? Can there be life for a fish outside the, the ocean? Can it live without it? Yeah, There is no outside for it. It doesn't exist. Just like that. For us, this Brahman consciousness is our ocean. We can only live in it. There is nothing outside. The outside doesn't exist. Got it? Yeah. So what is basically Brahman consciousness? An ocean of prana. Ocean of life or prana. Prana word also we've heard. Yeah. Prana is that life force energy which is running inside every little fish, shark, dolphin, goldfish, seahorse, whatever we all are. Yeah. Somehow that life which is outside in this ocean is also inside in this piece of prakriti. Yeah. The one which is inside is called purusha. The one which is all pervading is called Brahman. Got the difference? But it is the same. Can the water inside this bottle say that I am different from the water in the ocean? Same water, no? Yeah. Just this is encased or limited. Got it? But it is the same water. Like that only this little force of life, this prana, is encased in this prakriti. It's not different from the ocean of prana outside. Understood? You understood the difference between purusha and brahman? Absolutely clear? If I wake you up in the night and ask you what's the difference, you'll be able to tell me. What is the brahman? Ocean of prana. Okay, Everything and outside. what is Purusha? Life force inside. Yeah. Inside each little piece of Prakriti, the life force that runs that piece of Prakriti. So, okay, I understand you understand that there is life in this piece of Prakriti. Is there life in this piece of Prakriti? Yes. See, huh? Yes, 100% sure? Yeah. Everybody? Is there life in this piece of Prakriti? Yes. Every little object, it might appear non-living to this eye. But this eye has a limitation. This intellect also has a limitation. Yeah? That energy exists in, in this also. Yes. That energy or that Brahman consciousness exists in every living and non-living being. Understanding that energy is jnana. Got it? Understanding this piece of prakriti outside is vigyan. Vigyan is understanding through this eye, through this ear, through this tongue or sense of taste, through this touch, how much I can touch and feel and understand. But what is jnana? What is jnana? 
understanding that purusha can that purusha be fathomed through these five senses sight sound smell taste and touch that which is beyond the five senses how can it be understood by the five senses it cannot na so how do i understand it meditation when you go deep into meditation in the silence of the self you can actually recognize that purusha that energy and then when your meditation becomes more and more and more silent you will come to a point where you recognize oh that purusha is here it's there it's there it's there it's there oh we are all just an ocean of prana that's all we are this comes as an actual experience in meditation you're not seeing it with these eyes you're not feeling it or touching it you are not hearing it you are not smelling anything yeah you are not tasting anything it is an experience yes has your meditation gone that deep yet something is wrong what is it that is what lord krishna is going to tell you in this chapter gyan vigyan yoga got it yes he will actually tell you what is the problem oh my dear arjuna why can't you see it yet so ready for it yes it's not going to be a pravachan session yes it's going to be a very hard grueling session are you ready to be grueled yes baked roasted yes see ya that's happening every day anyway <laughs> <laughs> this is much more i'll pick up the stick chalega danda i will pick up this is face to face this was happening okay everybody on hang up where's your notebook show me your notebook and where are your ziploc bags if you yeah, don't i don't have my own notebook okay good if you don't have two ziploc bags quickly get up go to the kitchen get two ziploc bags quickly quickly run to the kitchen so let's revise for the late comers what is brahman consciousness what is brahman the ocean of prana the ocean of prana yes what is there in this ocean of prana what is there in this ocean of prana everything everything and everyone is in this brahman consciousness yes so what are we really part of ocean we are part of the ocean that's correct and we the everybody did karma video no what is the first thing in the karma video first thing for that even before that what is the first sentence of the karma video not one sentence in that video is extra huh? every word spoken in that video is essential so take your memory back what is the first line of that video what was there in the beginning of the creation creation what nothing 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 the set of things is brahman. brahman consciousness the ocean yeah or nothingness yes then what happened so what does that mean what happened to this brahman consciousness it divided into prakriti divided was just said for the sake of because it's not enough force but does it really divide there was a vibration at the time beautiful so basically like from a mother's womb the child is born like that you can say from the human consciousness what is born division yeah division prakriti and shakti and purusha beautiful prakriti and purusha
What is Purusha? Okay. Yeah. How is it related to the matter? Five elements, everything. Yeah. Three gunas, five elements, doshas. What is all that? Is that prakriti or purusha? No, that's purusha. That's prakriti. Prakriti, yeah. That's prakriti. So prakriti basically is that combination of five elements. What are the five elements? Earth, water, air, fire, ether. Earth, water, fire, ether, plus air. This is Prakriti. Yes. What is the nature of earth? Heaviness. Heaviness, consolidation. And the ability to be fertile, to give birth to. That is earth element. Yes, you plant a seed in the earth, what happens? It sprouts. It sprouts. Yeah. Now, is just that earth? Have a body. Everything is earth. The skin, blood, bones, all this is earth. This wall, this paper, this is all earth. But is it just earth now? No. No. These are just the gross forms of earth as in everything and everybody is a permutation and combination of earth, water, fire, ether, air. Only the percentage varies. Yeah. So in this there is 99% earth, 0.01% yeah? fire, 0.25% water. Yeah. I'm just add, giving you any percentage. Add it up and make it 100%. <coughs> Yeah, air and space. Got it? Like that, only this body is also a combination of earth, water, fire, ether, air in different, different percentages. Understood? Everything in Prakriti is nothing but a permutation and combination of earth, water, fire, ether, air. Different, different percentages. Now, earth has its own nature. Heaviness, consolidation, fertility. Yeah. What gives it this nature? Who decided earth should have this nature? Huh? Fantastic. That's the dharma. How? Who? The Brahman. So finally, it comes from nothing at the time. How does the earth element know after being kept here, I have to just stay there? If I put water, same thing. If I put water here, just water without the glass, if I pour water, will it sit there? It will flow. Who? Yeah. Who decided? Memory. What gives it that quality? What gives it the quality? Fantastic. Niyate is like you are saying the policies and procedures. <laughs> Who laid down the policy and procedure? Who is implementing? It's the Brahman. The element itself. The element itself. Huh? From where is the element itself doing it? What Show is propelling the earth to sit and water to flow and fire to go up? When the earth was manifested, it's, it's a nature. Beautiful. Where are you from? Nature No, no. A person who is really seeking must go into the depth. What is nature? Who decided? Who gave it this? Ahorusha decided. Oh, oh my god. Let's <laughs> talk. That comes from the, water, right? the unchanging. Somebody just gave me the. Ahorusha actually decides. Perfect. The earth element will stay in its place is decided by that life force energy which is inside of the earth. First thing we said was that life force energy is in everything and everybody. Yes? So that life force energy or that purusha which is in earth element tells the earth element stay. The purusha that is in that water element tells the water element flow. Understood? Not in these 
not in language now please stop imagining that we are talking to prakriti no sit i'm just making a point i right? getting yeah so purusha is that energy which is there in every piece of prakriti the brahman consciousness is an ocean of prana and we are all what drops of that prana one drop of prana is the purusha which is sitting inside this marker and has called it predominantly the earth element got it yeah it's not different yeah we'll go deeper and deeper into it as we go we'll understand even the different divisions of prana and of purusha but for the beginning this is good yeah so purusha tells the prakriti move stay sit whatever it gives it that energy what made gravity decide that it has to pull all of us it is that energy in the earth element that is pulling us otherwise we will all start flying up are you getting it yes so it is nothing but purusha that is the laws of nature whatever you see whether it is electricity whether it is magnetism whether it is gravity anything any 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 laws of nature clear yeah. understanding prakriti how can prakriti be understood five senses through the five senses what are the five senses sight sight taste touch sight taste taste touch sound sound taste touch touch and hear smell smell that's the way i understand prakriti that's how science functions yes yes or no yes, yes. everybody got it understanding prakriti through the process of the through the function of the five senses is called vigyan In English, Vigyan. No, no, one more time. What is Vigyan? What is Vigyan? Vigyan is understanding prakriti through the five senses. Through the function of the five senses is Vigyan. Yes. Now I have started thinking. Oh, I am this prakriti. This piece of prakriti, five foot seven inches. this color this race i have totally identified with this prakriti whatever i see i think that is the truth whatever i touch i see that is the truth whatever i taste that is the truth i cannot understand anything beyond these five senses correct it's so difficult no because i only understand science science can prove everything in the laboratory it's very easy for me to understand science or vigyan can purusha be understood through these five senses yes you have to transcend the five senses you have to go beyond the five senses understanding something beyond the function of the five senses is called gyan is it same as and later a process a step to enlightenment first step first step yeah and how are we all making an attempt to understand it through meditation understood what is vigyan and what is gyan understanding the five senses is vigyana and understanding, understanding going beyond the five senses and understanding purusha is gnana yeah Is it possible for me to do this on my own? No. That is why who is required? Guru. The guru. Yes, that is why Lord Krishna is there to tell Arjuna, this is the path. I will talk to you about Gyan Vigyan. I help you go beyond, but to go beyond, you have to follow certain. 
things, then only can you go beyond, otherwise your mind is going to be stuck. Right? You will say, no, no, you show me God first, then I believe in God. I say, no, you cannot see God. You have to go beyond your intellect, beyond the five senses. When you go beyond, when you transcend, when you are in that silence of the self, you will experience God. No, 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 no. First you show it to me. You are saying, you are standing at the swimming pool and you are saying, no, first you teach me swimming, then I will go into the pool. I am saying, no, first you jump into the pool, then I will teach you swimming. No, 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 no. That is where the conflict is. That is exactly the conflict you all experience in meditation. That is why meditation does not go deep. Have you noticed this? It's an inner conflict. There is a guru inside. Yeah? That guru inside is telling you, go deeper into meditation. The mind and intellect, what do they do? No, no, no. Only what I see, smell, touch, taste and hear is the truth. Don't go beyond this. I think about that beautiful girl. I have to go to the mall now. Get up, get up. No more meditation. And your mind pulls you out. Are you seeing what I'm saying? This conflict is not just external, it's internal. That understanding that conflict is gyan vigyan yoga. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Yeah. This is the biggest obstacle every seeker on this path really faces. You start the path, it becomes easy. Guru teaches you the technique, you follow his technique, you follow his teachings. But to a point you follow, after that this mind starts with its... Yeah? Now how to get rid of that is what Lord Krishna will teach you. Yes? But before going ahead, homework for you. Homework may last work. <laughs> You have to keep thinking, what does this conflict give a rise to in my mind? This conflict that goes on, which we spoke about, between the Gyan and Vigyan inside me. What does it give a rise to? What happens inside? What stops me from going into a deep meditation? You keep thinking about it, you will give me this answer after Kriya. Wait, what is the conflict? What is what? This conflict that I just explained. Yeah, but why does the conflict give a rise to something else? Yeah, what happens? What happens inside? What's just the drama playing inside? I have to identify the drama. See, if I have to um, cure something, I have to recognize what is the root cause of the problem and pull that root cause out. If I don't recognize only the root cause of the problem, can I solve the problem? Got it? There is a thorn stuck inside you. That thorn is not letting you move on, letting you get healed and move on. You have to pull out that thorn. You have to recognize what it is. It is a conflict between Gyan and Vigyan inside you, the drama inside you. Yeah? That prevents you from going deeper into meditation. Too complicated? Got it? Too complicated? Like, it's both. It's both. <laughs> Simple and complicated. Yeah. It's like what is stopping me to go from Vijnana to Jnana. Ah, that is but, that is the self-contemplation you have to do. During Kriya, I want you to contemplate. What is stopping me from experiencing the Purusha? From going from what I can see, touch, taste, hear, smell towards that which is beyond it. There's something that is stopping me. Everybody will have something. And the answers will not be same. Yeah? That is where you have to find the answer. Yeah? They might come under a, an umbrella. Yeah? That we'll discuss later. But your cause is different. Everybody's cause is different. And it's a personal homework. You don't have to share with me or others. You think, what is it? Mind. Keep thinking. <laughs> yeah? Keep contemplating what is that that prevents you from moving from Vigyan towards Gyan.
Yes, Evident Hangout got it. Clear? Now, I know this room is small, but you have to sit in a circle and hold each other's hands. Take a deep breath in and out. In the beginning of creation, there was absolute nothingness. Absolute nothingness. Keep holding the hand of the person sitting next to you. We were all just one big ocean of consciousness. We are just one pool of consciousness right now. this pool of consciousness there was a vibration Vibration was the birth of Prakriti. I was born. The individual consciousness was born. This individual consciousness experienced ego. And the ego wanted to move away from the pool. It wanted to be something, someone. Then slowly it let go of the pool of consciousness. You can slowly leave the hands. want to be something. And earth was born. Now you are a rock, an immovable, unshakable rock. the desire for more. The desire for more led you into another birth, maybe of a microorganism. Small little microorganism. And there was a desire for more. And you took your first water birth as a little fish. 
<coughs> fish don't sit so stationary. Come on, start swimming. Swimming in the ocean. Start moving. And this fish was eaten and it died. Now died. It was eaten by an alligator. So the last impression was that of that alligator. So what did you become? An alligator now in the next bird. And you went around eating fish. And little animals. Come on. Alligators don't sit in one place. Hunt. And you lived your life like that, eating, swimming, sometimes in water, sometimes in land. And you were attacked by a lion. And you died. The last impression was that of the lion. So you were reborn as a lion. And this lion was a happy lion. <laughs> He kept hunting rabbits and other animals. Happy lion in the big jungle. But one day this happy lion was hunted by a human being. Trapped. He was trapped in the trap. He could not come out of it. He wanted to get out. He was struggling. And he finally managed to come out of the net and started running. And the human shot him. And he was dead. So the last impression was that of the human being. Now he was born as a human baby. Babies are not sitting upright when they are born. He slowly started growing up and became a very sweet little child. And friends went to school. Come on, little soul. Little friends. And grew up even more. And then went to college with friends. And was very, very serious. And then this young boy or young girl was in love. The first childhood sweetheart. And a heartbreak happens. And then life goes on. Busy life. First job. And then one day family, you get married, you have kids. Kids grow up. And you start getting old. And old. When you get retired, kids are older now. They start taking care of you. Connected lots of impressions throughout the life. 
not so proud of our limitations, too many attachments, and this life comes to an end with some or the other strong attachment in the mind, either for some dukkha or craving for some sukha, and you breathe the last breath. entire lifetime was just spent in ragas and dishes. Either craving for something or averse to something. That strongest craving, that strongest aversion decided your next birth. And you were born again and the same cycle repeats. You are a baby again. Again the baby grows up, goes to school. The same thing again starts studying, again as a studious little kid. Again grows older, goes to college. Again falls in love. The same cycle repeats. Something inside tells you that there has to be a greater purpose in life. A greater purpose. Something bigger. You're looking for something, but you don't know what it is. You still continue. You go to work, you make money, you get married children, but he's still looking. And one day, the Guru comes in your life. Take your mind back to that first day when you met Gurudev. And he teaches you his Darshan Kriya. This experience of Purusha could have only been given to you by the Guru. Feel that gratitude towards the Guru. The Guru showed you the path. Slowly with more practices of the technique the eye started dropping away and you started moving closer to the Brahman consciousness, the pool of consciousness from which you had come out. Keeping your eyes closed, find that pool of consciousness that you had left. That is your true search. That is all that you are actually looking for. Look for it. With eyes closed, you will find that pool. And go back into that pool. back to that ocean. You cannot find it by sitting in one place. Stretch out your hands and find the pool of consciousness that you came out from. 
If you've forgotten that pool of consciousness, the Guru reminds you. You have now become one. That one pool of consciousness. That ocean of prana. The drop has merged with the ocean now. at the pool of consciousness. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> 